Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, colleagues, before I introduce Father Theodore, I would like to say a little bit about my Greek Orthodox Christian faith. We all know of the travels and letters of Paul to the Greeks in the cities of Athens, Corinth, Salonika, Antioch, Ephesus. As a matter of fact, the ancient Greeks were immediately receptive to this new religion of Jesus Christ. It should be no surprise that the New Testament was originally written in Byzantine Greek, and little has changed in the traditions of our church. Now on to Father Theodore. Father Theodore is a native of Pittsburgh. He moved to Georgia following his uh, then girlfriend, now wife Stacy. Stacy enrolled at UGA Go Dogs, and Father Theodore went to school at Kennesaw State University, where he studied uh, before theology. He studied uh, meteorology and history. He was ordained uh, a priest in. March of 2015 after completing his seminary uh, at the Holy Cross uh, Trinity Greek Orthodox Cathedral, oh excuse me, at the Holy Cross Greek Orthodox Church um, uh, School of Theology in Brookline, Massachusetts. He is now the priest at the Holy Cross Greek Orthodox Church in Macon and um, it was interesting we had a conversation a, a few weeks ago and we were talking about the hereafter and possibilities of going to, to heaven. And he answered me in a meteorological term. He said, Mike, you got about a 60% chance right now. So <laughs> with, that, with that being said, let me introduce you to Father Theodore, Father Theodore my priest. Good morning. First and foremost, I must thank uh, the speaker uh, for having, uh, having me here this morning and this honor of being here and also to uh, Representative Jokas for the uh, great honor of having been invited here today as the chaplain of the day. And as a pastor and priest of the Greek Orthodox Church, the invitation to have the, the blessing to speak to you all today really seems quite fitting. This week on Thursday, March 25th, we remember the 200th anniversary of the Declaration of Greek Independence from the Ottoman Empire. Now, if one examines my last name, Amer, Emer, however you want to pronounce it, with any kind of scrutiny, you might assume that I don't think he's Greek. And if you assume that, you are correct, actually. My ethnic roots from a couple generations back are from the Netherlands, Germany, and Ireland. So why am I up here speaking to you all today as a Greek Orthodox clergyman about Greek independence? Well, really, it stems from a journey that began in college. I discovered the richness, the depth, and history of the Orthodox Church that traces its lineage back to Jesus Christ, his holy apostles, and their successors. And additionally, I encountered in a new and profound manner a focus on the reality of Jesus Christ becoming man and the ramifications of that fact. One of the key principles, one of the key principles of our Christian faith is a principle that's not always evident on the surface. A good Greek word, eleftheria, freedom. God did not create us simply to follow rules or to be robots. He created us out of his divine love, out of his divine love as dynamic beings with the free will to utilize the potentiality given to us. God grants us the freedom to engage with the mystery of life, the mystery of life from the day of our birth. So in my learning of the Greek language, there's this really nice little wish 
that's given to a woman who's nearing birth. Kali Eleftheria. Literally, it means, like, good freedom. And I like to view this wish, good freedom, in sort of two ways. First of all, I like to think of it like good freedom to the mother from this special gift that you've been carrying around with you for these past few months. Good freedom from that. But secondly, and even more important, I like to think of this as a wish for the new child. Good freedom. This freedom that you are about to be endowed with as a human being being born into the world. As we read in St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, we are called to freedom, called to freedom. However, with that freedom comes a great responsibility. St. Paul continues with his teaching that we need to use this freedom that we're endowed with wisely, not for our own selfish means, but as servants, following the example and way of the Lord himself. Thus, it was no mistake, no mistake that March 25th was the day chosen by the Greek people to declare their independence. March 25th is the day of the Annunciation, nine months to the day before the birth of Jesus Christ, the day that the Archangel Gabriel announced to Mary that she would give birth to the Messiah, the one who would give the world the opportunity for freedom from sin and death. Jesus Christ, who himself, himself said that he came to serve, not be served, served as an example to the heroes of the Greek Revolution. They chose to put their own, li their own livelihoods at risk in order to open the doors to freedom for others. And we are all called, we are all called to this same high calling of facilitating this opportunity for those around us. And you all have this potentiality in a very concrete manner as those who serve in government to use the freedom wisely that you've been given as an opportunity, as an opportunity to serve our brothers and sisters out of love. God, as the all-powerful one, the all-powerful one, could have made us robots, just pulling our strings around like puppets. But instead, he gave us, being made in his image and likeness, the ability, the blessing to be co-creators and co-workers with him in this mystery of life. This is the beauty of the freedom that he has given us, which we facilitate in a country like the United States. We do not force people into submission, but we foster a society where it's a joy and an honor to serve our brothers and sisters and to employ our freedom wisely. As we honor the heroes of the Greek Revolution this week, people who also saw inspiration in the heroes of the American Revolution, may we also be inspired by them to honor God's image found in each and every one of us as people of freedom, using that freedom out of love for our neighbor, love for our neighbor, neighbor whoever they might be, which ultimately gives glory to our God and our Creator. Amen. At this time, I would ask you to rise and entreat our Lord in prayer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Eternal God and Father, ruler of the entire universe, ever enthroned in the minds and hearts of your faithful servants everywhere, we recognize your mystical presence among us and entreat you to remain in our midst as we come together this day. We pray to you to watch over and bless these servants, strengthening them and all of us, both in times of hardship and times of joy, making us worthy to wisely use our freedom given to us by you. For you are most holy and blessed, along with your co-eternal co Son, Jesus Christ, and your all holy good and life-creating spirit, now and forever, into the ages of ages. Amen. <laughs>